This is my antenna switch that I have been using for a few years. Uh, I used for a few years and it has been sitting in my uh, shelf for a number of years since I'm not active on the low bands for which this switch was uh, designed. The switch is uh, housed in a uh, stainless steel box uh, that I found in a surplus place. And um, I had somebody uh, uh, weld a bracket and I have drilled holes for different ways of mounting it. My favorite way was uh, mounting it on the steps of my tower uh, around 25 and uh, I used these two, uh, not these particular two U-bolts, uh, but because the originals were lost, and I used these for a demonstration. But I used uh, this technique to mount it on my um, RON25, and I, I could mount it on the inside of the tower or the outside of the tower. I like it on the outside because I was also using it as a step, because this uh, box is strong enough to uh, step on it. It's really strong. Um, not everybody's going to be lucky to find a box like this, but when you're building, you don't start looking for stuff when you decide to build. You, you, you go around and collect stuff. And then you design your project around what you have found. Um, I want to point out a couple of things, uh, suggestions, uh, not, uh, and my suggestion is this. Uh, when you hook up something, uh, instead of writing down that pin number one goes color number five, and pin number two goes color number zero, and so on, You'll be better off if you remember the color code and you said, okay, well, in number one, I'm going to put uh, brown because that is the color code. Number two, red. Number three, orange. Number four, yellow, and so on. Up to a number zero, which is black. You can't do that on everything because the engineers didn't really think about it. For example, rotators, number two connector on the high gain is you have to hook up with the black and the red on two and whatever it is, three. The engineers could have come up with something different that will help um, make it simpler so you don't have to write it down and lose it. So that's what I'm using. This switch runs from a um, LEDX uh, rotary solenoid, this baby right here. Rotary solenoids, you find them on flea markets, especially in the box under the seller's table, because very few sellers know what these are for. This solenoid, uh, when a, a power is applied, it, it rotates 12 degrees. At the end of 12 degrees, a mechanical arm comes up and opens a switch and interrupts the power. A spring puts the solenoid back to the original position, at the same time restoring power, which means that it will, it's going to pull another 12 degrees and so on. Eventually, it's going to reach a point where it's going to stop, and this is how it stops. This is what makes it stop. There is a wafer in here, which I cannot show because it's uh, hidden. But I will show you this wafer, which is uh, the same idea, but it, it, it's uh, slightly different. Now, this wafer has an arm that shorts out every contact except one. That one right there, coming up on my thumb. Right there on my thumb. Uh, this is the uh, opening. Now, this is the opening. <laughs> okay, so the the solenoid or a motor in this you can also use a motor. 
Um, you can keep running until it reaches the point, uh, the contact where you have applied power and it's going to stop. And that's how you select uh, the antennas. So in my case, I have lined up everything color coded and, uh, you know, from 1 to uh, 11. Uh, now, you can find these solenoids on flea markets, but most of them don't have this baby here. If you find one, just grab it. Probably the seller doesn't know what it is. He's going to give it to you for pennies. Um, uh, connectors. Uh, I like to use uh, end connectors because end connectors, believe it or not, are easier to uh, install on the cable if you know how to do it. Spend a little time and learn how to do it. So uh, end connectors are much better than, than anything else. So I'm using 12 of them here. Um, I use these cups because up here in Connecticut, and I guess other places too, there's these little bugs that fill up little holes, especially up high. They fill them up with mud and they, they put an egg in it. So this way, when you go back to hook up an antenna on a uh, connector that you had let, uh, left unprotected, you might find a hard ma mud and you might break your connector trying to uh, remove it. So uh, these uh, caps are, are, are very cheap and you can find them on uh, flea markets all over the place. Um, the control connector, uh, this is not my favorite control connector. I have others, but now it's too late. I'm not going to bother with it. Uh, it's got gold-plated pins, and um, they uh, uh, <clears throat> on the other side, what I have done is I have um, uh, plugged it with uh, silicone uh, rubber, so this way um, humidity is not going to get in and, and uh, destroy the uh, connectors. Uh, the switch itself, <clears throat> I have um, mounted two wafers, one on top of the other. You cannot see the second one. In order to do that, I have to take this out, the, 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 the bud, uh, box out, which is uh, very, very <laughs> difficult because there's a lot of little screws, 440s with uh, nuts that there's, it's not easy to remove them. There's, um, I don't know, maybe uh, four, four on each. Uh, four on each connector uh, times uh, 12, you can imagine, and the problem taking it apart. So there's two wafers, and these wafers are powerful enough. One of them would do. The power I was running was an 8877 homebrew that I have. And um, I have seen uh, <coughs> commercially sold switches like the Drake and some others that don't they have wafers that are smaller than this one here. Uh, and yet, they, you know, they take the power. Unless you start interrupting while you're transmitting, which is dumb. Uh, but uh, some people do. Um, so, here I'm using two wafers. And uh, this switch is enough for um, any kind of power. From the uh, top connector, say this connector right here. Uh, a piece of braid, let's take this, a piece of braid from here uh, goes to the bottom uh, connector and from there, uh, bottom uh, <laughs> wafer, I'm sorry, and from there goes to the connector. Why braid? Uh, braid because I don't like to use size uh, 12 um, bus wire because sooner or later it's going to get hot and it's going to push. It's going to get cold and it's going to pull. And push-pull a few times is going to break something or it's going to make a bad connection. So this way the braid doesn't do that. It's flexible and it will stay there forever. Um, 
the um, what else do we have here? I think I covered everything, and uh, I uh, want to talk about commenting on this uh, video. I don't care what you think. If you think uh, negative, you go ahead and give me a thumbs down. As long as you explain and you have an idea, because that idea, somebody can use it. I don't think I'm going to use it because I'm not going to build anymore. But it's nice for other people to know uh, what you what what your techniques are. Um, I have other projects that I'm going to make uh, videos, and uh, I want to tell you that when I was building uh, the 8877, which uh, that video is going to surprise a lot of people, and maybe some people will be infuriated with what I have done, but. When I was uh, building that amplifier, I was looking for ideas. Anybody who uh, wanted to look at it and comment, I would um, bring them in. Uh, in those days, and this is 20 years ago, uh, there was no um, uh, internet to send pictures. So uh, the only comments I got was from people who uh, could stop by. I couldn't send pictures to somebody friends around the country and around the world. But I got enough ideas and I got one of the best ideas from a neighbor of mine. And I will explain when I get to the amplifier. Other projects is a power supply, at least 70 amps <coughs> uh, in a very uh, nice contained uh, little box uh, with uh, full metering and an antenna tuner with uh, a huge um, rotary inductor and two uh, 475 picofarad vacuum variables, uh, mechanical uh, turns counters, and uh, a switching for radios number one to four, all end connectors, I should say, and also a switching similar to uh, the linear amplifier uh, connected to uh, the uh, transmitter and the antenna. So I will explain that when I get there. And again, uh, please um, watch this video and give uh, your ideas. This is WA1WLA, the home brewer. I uh, kind of lost interest the last few years, but you know, uh, I still have it. Maybe someday I'll start again. Thanks for watching.